Hi, this is Misha. And this isn't going to be as long and comprehensive as my little talk about Makarovs and buying surplus, but I figured why not put some Tokarevs on the table. So that's what I did. Now, this isn't going to really be about their history or service. This is just about Tokarevs in the U.S. A. So, I brought out a 1942 Russian, a 19, uh, I forget what this is, 46, 47 Russian, post-war, later style. Then I brought out a Polish, and then finally a Yugo M50 Seven. Well, the Tokarev has been coming into the U.S. since the 80s. But prior to that, we did have some legitimate vet bringbacks from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, such as this gun here. That's so why this one is in an amazing condition. But this one was captured legitimately at what we know as Hamburger Hill. It's kind of neat because it's not a refurb and it has the wood grips on it still. Even though condition-wise it's only so-so, it's a true surplus gun, a battlefield pickup. And actually, the Vietnamese soldier who carried it kept it in mechanically very good condition. Perfectly functional gun. So obviously these came over, they weren't uh, molested. I think this one's neat just because, yeah, you don't see the original World War II guns much. Most of them in Russia were um, refurbished. Now this one... Is an import, and it has this dingus on the back here added as a safety. That is because, as I said in the Makarov video, the 68 gun control applied a points system to handguns to try to prevent so called Saturday Night Specials. Also, pretty much every gun that came in. At least an automatic pistol needed a safety, which a Tokarev does not have, except for this half cock here. That was the only real safety. Keep in mind, when they adopted this, Russia had been using the Nagant revolver, which didn't have a safety, so it was kind of seen as an unnecessary thing. Pretty much your safety was just supposed to be your brains. Plus, they wanted to make these pistols as cheap as possible. So anyway, these came in. I'm going to sit down here, guys, a bit. I'm tired. Sorry. But they had to add safeties. Now, most of them that came in with this style of safety in the rear here were the Chinese guns. And, and China did export a number of Tokarev guns in both the original 7.62-25 and 9mm. Of course, most of those were brand new guns, although some were reconditioned military guns. And those were really the, the only Tokarevs available for some time, although, like I said, some Russians did come in like this one. But I remember when the surplus really started to hit and we had um, two types. We had Romanian and Polish. And of those, the Polish were considered better. Now the main reason was, aside from this amazing Polish quality machining, 
they originally applied their safeties over in Poland. This had a few advantages. One, it allowed them to be CNR at the time, the way they were doing the rules. Now it doesn't matter. But also, it was just a better safety. I'm not going to say it was good, but the, the safeties installed over there were at least not dangerous. And again, kind of like with the thumb rest grip on the Makarov, this had a thumb rest, but you could remove it and the safety once you privately owned it. I, I've pulled the safety on this one. I've been meaning to kind of fill that hole in. You can do it. I did replace the um, kind of thumb rest grip with an original Polish military grip. You'll notice their grip doesn't have the uh, crest on it. Most nations have put a crest there. Poland very early on did, but then quickly changed it to just simple grips. Now, later Polish guns would have the kind of clunkier U.S. safeties. All the Romanians I've seen did as well, the, US, the kind of the clunky ones, the big ones. That's not to say every single one of them did, but the Romanians thing they do. Now both the Polish and Romanian Tokarevs that came in were in excellent condition. But the problem with the clunky safety, we'll call it, is downright dangerous. Sometimes it just wouldn't work. You'd, you'd put it on safe and it would still fire. Other times it would kind of jam up the action. And sometimes you'd have it on safe and then you'd flick it off safe and if your hammer was cocked it would let the hammer go and it would ostensibly fire. So not only were these just annoying to a collector, they really made these guns terribly unsafe. And what's the point of having a safety on a pistol that makes it unsafe? And I get the general idea of having a safety on a gun, but again, many revolvers didn't have safeties, so what's the point? So we had Romanians and Polish. One gun we haven't seen imported en masse yet are Hungarian Tokarevs. They have not come in yet. I'm hoping one day they will. I've had two in my life, I think, maybe three, and they were vet bringbacks. One of them was in excellent condition and had the holster and everything. And the other one was pretty, um, pretty rough, you know, Vietnam, but it was still a Hungarian. So those were kind of uh, rare even today. This one here was rare, up until about maybe 13, 12 years ago. This is a Yugo M57. Now this is very much a Tokarev. But whereas the first three we've looked at, in addition to the Romanians and the Hungarians, are exact copies. The M57 is kind of its own thing, much like Zestava and its other designs. When it did the Tokarevs, it it um, it did its own thing, like I said. It went to a longer grip, hence a longer mag. It also went to a larger button for the mag release. Not a bad idea. It also went to... Again, guys, hard to do one-handed here. Kind of some patterning on the uh, top of the slide to cut down on glare. They also changed up the sights a bit, and they put a really cool Yugo crest on it. Well, when these first started coming in, for the first mini years, they had a 1911 kind of ISK safety back here, which was kind of bad. It was more reliable as a safety, but they had to really cut on not only the frame, but also they cut a notch in the slide, which, even if you took the safety out, would still have a cut open slide. But here, a year or two back, someone got the bright idea to see if the ATF would let the, quote, safety be one of the Glock-style dinguses on the trigger. And wouldn't you know it, they were fine with that. Also, you could tell this company really cared because they put the import mark on the underside of the trigger guard, which is just an awesomely great place to put it. If you gotta have it, put it out of the way. So these are awesome. We just 
Why didn't someone think to ask the ATF about the Dingus trigger 20 years ago? We could have had so many more Polish and Romanian guns, even some maybe some Russians, that weren't cut up. But I guess better late than never. I kind of secretly hope this same company brings in the Hungarians if they ever get surplused. Anyway, much as I said before, once in the U.S., it doesn't really matter. You can modify the safety or take it out. And that's exactly what I've done here. Since the dingus is just in the trigger, and the trigger very, very easily comes out of its oak rev, take the trigger out. Put a regular M57 trigger in. Boom. Aside from the little import mark down below, this thing is pretty much unmodified. And that's the best thing you can really have aside from just a straight bring back like this one up here. So in a way, this M57, which was a gun I always wanted before they came in. So I was really happy when they came in and I had one of the uh, safety ones for a long time. But when these came out, I, I did pick one up. It's really become my favorite Tokarev. Plus, it, the longer grip makes it um, a little easier to handle and shoot. I honestly really like how the Tokarev shoots. I think it's a fun gun. It has a very unique recoil impulse. It's also worth pointing out, speaking of the M57, the new production models, known as the M57A, are being manufactured by Zastava Arms and imported to the U.S. Just like this. There's also a version in 9mm called the M70A. And a compact version, even, called the M88A. So these are still in production today, and you can get brand new Tokarevs made by one of the original factories. Of course... The rest of the ones available are surplus. So really, we really haven't had brand new Tokarev since the Chinese guns were cut off many, many moons ago. But yeah, if you've never fired a Tokarev, or if you've only fired a VZ-52 in that caliber, you really want to try one of these, because I don't really care for the VZ-52. It doesn't shoot nearly as nicely as a Tokarev. It just doesn't, it, it, it's very snappy and punchy, and the grip's just kind of a weird shape. But these guns, I think because of their smaller grip, and kind of straight pullback trigger, they're really fun. I mean, this is essentially a copy, an upscale version of a Browning. 1903 it's more 1903 than it is 1911 but it, it does kind of borrow the the locking tilting barrel from the 1911 but the general outline and pattern is more 1903 ish if you look at pictures you'll see what i'm talking about like i said since i'd already talked about the makarov i figured why not talk about the Tokarev? I remember the first day I bought one. It was a Chinese. I was tickled to death. I just always wanted one. At that time, you know, these were $100. The Romanian surplus came in for about $199 with the full kit. The Polish were always a little more money. And the Yugos had been about the same, $200 to $300, depending on when and where. Nowadays, Russian ones with the safeties, they're definitely bringing several hundred. I don't, they haven't checked in a while, but I'd say at least 700 now, probably more. And ones without the safety and, you know, used condition like this, they're probably bumping a thousand now. And really nice ones, eh, a little more. Neat piece of history, and, uh, very iconic for uh, World War II collecting. Anywho, I'd love to hear about your own TT-33s or other guns chambered for 7.62 by 25. Any questions, please post them below. If you could, like, share, and subscribe.
And for more of a history and, you know, formal style video, do check our out our main channel over at Mishiko, where we've covered Tokarevs in various guises and types, including this uh, awesome M57 with no annoying safety. It's a nice gun. Shoots very well. Well, this is Misha. Appreciate you tuning in. And I will catch you very soon. Next time.